stainless buildings coming down. There are lots of them coming down in Christchurch after the earthquake. But the good news is it saved lives. Buildings like this saved hundreds or thousands of lives because they didn't collapse in a huge earthquake. But let's look into the future. We can't afford to have hundreds of buildings like this demolished after every big earthquake. There's got to be a better way of doing it, and we've got to find that way. I'm Andy Buchanan. I'm a professor of civil engineering here at the University of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand, and I'm part of a team that studies earthquake engineering. We look at better ways of designing buildings and bridges and all kinds of infrastructure so it won't be damaged when we get the next big earthquake. In this lab, we can build anything and we can bust anything. We're always looking for the future. This is what the university is about, is looking for new and better and more economical ways of making safer buildings. This, for example, is a reinforced concrete column which has been through an earthquake and it did not have enough reinforcing, not enough spiral reinforcing to hold all the concrete together. As a result of many, many tests like this and many, many computer analyses has led to building code changes in, in Europe, in Japan, in America, and in all the, the high seismic regions of the world. This is an earthquake shaking table, an earthquake simulator, and what our technicians can do is they can dial up any kind of earthquake on here. The biggest problem we've got here is we don't have enough room, and so that this building on here, you can see it's a three-story building, but it's only about one quarter scale because we just don't have the facilities for doing a full-scale experiment. The School of Engineering is over 100 years old, and when I joined the university in the 1960s, there was a special team of earthquake engineers who were starting to develop a worldwide reputation in earthquake engineering. Harry Hopkins came here in the 1950s and he employed Professor Bob Park and Professor Tom Pauley. Park and Pauley became uh, world experts, especially in earthquake resistance of reinforced concrete structures. The earthquake we had on February the 22nd was a moderate earthquake but it, it was a direct hit on Christchurch. And so in downtown Christchurch, we got these huge accelerations. The old masonry buildings fell over or were very badly damaged and they're now coming down. But the real problem we've got now is modern buildings, which were damaged as expected, but they're too expensive to repair. And so there are some buildings in Christchurch which are gonna come down because it's more expensive to repair them than it is to build a new one. What we now have to do is to lift the bar and make sure that the new buildings we design will have no structural damage, even after a big earthquake. The key to this whole idea is to make a prefabricated building where the different bits of the building are held together with rubber bands. Now, in the real building, they're not rubber bands. They're high-strength steel tendons. But those high-strength steel tendons tie the whole building together so that when it shakes in an earthquake, it always snaps back into position. This technology was developed for concrete buildings, and we're starting to see those buildings in New Zealand. The best example is the Southern Cross Hospital building, which went through the earthquake with no damage. And what we've done here for the first time is we've said, let's try it in wood. So we've taken this technology developed for concrete buildings, and we've tried it with wood buildings, and it works really well. The first timber building in the world using this new technology is the three-story Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology. High strength steel rods allow the building to snap back into place and the Kiwi invented steel plates absorb energy in a major earthquake. Christchurch Women's Hospital is the only building in the South Island which is sitting on base isolated devices and uh, that's why this building did really well in the earthquake. And that's a lead rubber bearing that's got rubber with steel plates in it and in the middle of the steel plates, there's a plug of lead. And the entire building has been separated from the ground. And it's worth doing for a very important building like a hospital. The interesting thing about this is that it's a Kiwi invention. And there's now a, a company, Robinson Seismic, that sells these base isolation devices around the world. And I think we're going to see a lot more of these in the rebuild of Christchurch. We're going to have more earthquakes in New Zealand cities. But if we're going to save lives and save buildings, we're going to have to make an investment. We're going to have to invest in new technology, which is going to cost money, and we're going to have to invest in education, because we need bright young engineers 
coming through the system who can design buildings like this which won't have to be demolished when the next big one comes.